But looking back on, on your career, it seems to be divided in two, almost exactly by, by Cleopatra. Would you agree with that, that, that it changed course completely after Cleopatra? Well, I don't know. I think my life was changed by a woman, you know, who was called um, Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what uh, exactly um, she did to me, um, but certainly... Um, I don't know exactly what to say, but uh, the, those uh, people, you know, like Laurence Olivier and Paul Schofield and uh, Marlon Brando and Elizabeth Taylor and uh, people like that, they're very rare, very strange, very odd, very perverse. Uh, and they obviously believe that they are uh, very extraordinary people in their odd way um, and they believe firmly of course that uh, that they are uh, gifted by God or something like that uh, unfortunately I don't believe that you see I mean about myself there is uh, unquestionably a kind of passion a strange idiocy where you uh, uh, you walk on the stage or you walk on the screen or whatever it is and you uh, you feel a strange kind of power. Uh, I defy the power, of course. What would you say it is that you do when you're up there in front of the camera? No, I think I'm a sort of animal. I get on there and I don't throw out the words and I have a reasonable voice and so on and uh, I just get out there and uh, become an animal in some strange way in the same way that uh, the other people uh, become animals except that they believe that they are fundamentally powerful and beautiful and so on I don't believe that at all certainly I'm not powerful certainly I'm not beautiful but I don't understand what these fellows do except that I appreciate what they do, if you know what I mean. But then what, what, what keeps you going in the, in the same profession? Money. But you don't need the money now, surely? You've got to be joking. <laughs> I've got about 50,000 people to take care of. I, you know, I have to pay everybody off, I have to pay lawyers, uh, legends, um, I have to keep this dog. At the moment, I'm doing all right. Uh, I pick up a lot of money for films, and uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Man, it's, it's absolute nonsense. The whole idea of the film business is nonsense. On the stage, of course, I'm absolutely sure. I'm certain I can go anywhere and play anything. Uh, but I don't really know. Uh, what uh, prompts the imagination of the public. Uh, which, uh, it's a funny, funny Chinese dog, the only do Chinese dog who speaks Welsh. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I really think it's uh, very odd and very perverse. Um, Lawrence Olivier once uh, said that um, were it not for the fact that he were an actor, uh, he would have gone mad. And I'm beginning to think that I would have gone mad too, but I don't put myself in the same course category as uh, as Lawrence Olivier because he really loves the theatre. He, he, he's obsessed by it, and so on. I'm not. On what basis now do you choose the roles you're going to play in, in movies? Because um, sometimes you seem to make very curious choices. Films like Bluebeard, for instance, and um, Hammersmith is out. One well, wonders why you chose to do those films? Yeah, I, I long to be a failure. <laughs> and? And I am a failure. Well, yeah, but a, a very successful failure. No, no, I manage. I get along. I'm afraid that in about uh, five or six months I'm going to go back on the stage. It terrifies me, it appalls me, but I'll go back on the stage. Why? I mean, is it sheer masochism? Perhaps, perhaps. Never thought of that.
Richard, where, where do you where do you go from here? I mean, what, what, how do you envisage your, your future? Are you going to go back to the stage? Are you going to continue making movies? You once told me you were going to retire. I think uh, that the uh, essential uh, uh, thing that I must do is um, quietly uh, room myself uh, into the grave, you know, uh, uh, sleep, sleep, sleep. Sleep is so fundamental. I ever tell you that poem about sleep? I bet I didn't. No, I didn't think you did. Oh, yeah. But it, hmm. is, is, it, is it going to be back to the theatre or, or more movies? No, no. The only thing that's important are the children and Elizabeth and uh, being alive, I suppose, in a sort of extraordinary way. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. That, that sounds a, a very depressed attitude for you to be taking. I would have thought that in the position you're in now, you would be feeling much more bucked up about things. You know, you, you must understand, Barry, that I'm sending you up. I thought you might be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm reasonably uh, intelligent, uh, clever, Good, kind, sweet, nasty. Um, gifted? Oh no, I'm not gifted. No, no. Position. Yeah. Attenzione, va bene. Motore. But do you, do you feel very vulnerable then when when you're acting? Well, I hate acting. Well, you did tell me a few years ago that you were planning to give it up. But you're still doing it. You've made a lot of films since then. I have to make money, look. I have to make money. You know, if you give your wife uh, a jewel or something like that, costing him, shall we say, about $100,000 or whatever it is, what the hell are you going to do, you know? No, no. I, I just count the shekels. And I count the money. Do you really do it just for the money, though, Richard? No, very. I mean, you're you... in a very, very, very strange state. Uh, who knows uh, what uh, happens? Uh, I don't know. May I have a cigarette? By all means, yes. Mm. Do you enjoy well, this superstar status, the, the tremendous celebrity, the fact that you can't move without being mobbed? Um, do, do you really enjoy it, that kind of life? If it stops, I'm dead. 